Okay, so now that we're uh, up in the air, we're level flight at 2,000 feet. We're actually tracking in the north practice area here. We're going to teach you some BAI. Now, basic attitude instrument flying uh, base is effectively the same thing we use in visual flying, except that we don't use the horizon for our primary pitch references anymore and bank references. What we're actually going to use is our artificial horizon, the attitude indicator. So that's our primary reference. The key to, to safe instrument flying is proper interpretation of the instruments. And what that means is that you don't omit an instrument and also understand the limitations of your instruments that you're using. Okay. So one thing we're going to look at today is our primary uh, field of vision, if you would, would be the PFD. Okay. We'd be looking at our attitude indicator. Now, some aircraft uh, use different scan techniques depending on how the instruments are placed uh, in the cockpit. Uh, there's various types of scan techniques, scanning your instruments to make sure you don't omit anyone. Uh, there's the inverted V, there's the rectangular, there's the hub and spoke. Now for the G1000, the most appropriate to use would probably be the hub and spoke, which means that your attitude indicator is your primary reference. And then you always go out to a different instrument and come back to the attitude indicator. So it's kind of like the wheels of a bicycle, the spokes of a bicycle. So we'll start the attitude indicator. We'll go to the airspeed, make sure we're getting the airspeed we want, then back to the attitude indicator. Then to the altimeter, making sure that we're still level flight here, then back to the attitude indicator. Then down to our heading indicator, making sure we're on the heading that we want to be on, back to the attitude indicator. Then we scroll over to MFD, making sure that our engine parameters are still within limits, as well as just checking the moving map for extra situational awareness, and then back to the attitude indicator. So that's one way that you can scan that will probably be the most efficient for using, using the G1000 at the university. So let's interpret our instruments right now. So if we look at our attitude indicator, we notice about 2.5 degrees. Let's look at our airspeed. It's stable at 100 knots. Back to the attitude indicator. Back to the al altimeter. You'll notice that we are not climbing or descending on the VSI and that our altimeter is not moving and we're stuck at 2,000 feet. Down to the heading indicator, and you'll notice that we're on a 257 heading and we haven't moved. So from interpretation of these instruments, we're straight and level at 100 knots at 2,000 feet. Okay, so your pitch reference for this is 2.5 degrees and your power reference is 2370. So just like attitude flying in VFR, everything that you do is, is referenced to pitch and power. Whatever you do, you always use pitch and power and adjust as needed from there. So 2.5 degrees. 2350 RPM will give you approximately 100 knots and straight and level flight. Let's say I wanted to slow the aircraft down to 90 knots. Well, the first thing we're going to do is reduce the power. But you've got to be watching your attitude indicator to make sure that you don't descend. So we'll reduce the power, let's say 2200 RPM. As the aircraft slows down, you're going to have to increase your pitch slightly to maintain level flight. Now, Knowing when to increase pitch, you've got to anticipate it, but also watch your VSI to make sure that you're not uh, descending. So your primary reference here for altitude will be your altimeter to make sure you're not descending. And then your primary reference for airspeed is the airspeed indicator. Now you'll notice that my pitch, 2200 RPM, is only getting me about 95 knots. So let's reduce about another 50 RPM. And we'll see what that gives us. So you'll see I'm making fine-tuned adjustments. And also what I'm going to do is use my trim. Pitch, power, and trim. During this whole time, I'm scanning attitude indicator, airspeed. Attitude indicator, altimeter. Attitude indicator, heading uh, indicator. And then attitude back to the uh, MFD, to our engine parameters. So I'm still getting about 96 knots, 95 knots. I'm still waiting for my numbers to stabilize. Whenever you make a change, make one change and wait for all your performance numbers to stop moving. And what I mean by that is your airspeed and altimeter and heading. Don't make changes while everything is still adjusting itself. Wait till it stabilizes, then make another change, small changes. It's almost like trial and error. So I'm getting about 93 knots. And that's close enough to what I want. And you'll notice that my pitch attitude is actually now about three to four degrees. So slightly high pitch attitude, slightly higher pitch attitude. 
and uh, lower power sitting about 2160 is what I'm getting right now for today. Bear in mind that these numbers may change depending on the day, the weight of the aircraft, your CG, uh, things like that. If I want to turn back to 100 knot cruise and straighten level, I'll put the power back to 2350, lower the pitch back to 2.5 degrees and trim it out. And you'll notice that I, I let go of the controls. The aircraft is sitting at 2.5, 100 knots and 2000 feet. So this is straight and level. Let's talk about turns. Now in IFR, in IMC conditions, we use something called standard rate turns. Standard rate turns is three degrees per second. Um, your primary reference for that is something called the turn coordinator, which in the G1000 is actually above your heading indicator. It has standard rate trends right here, just above the indication. You've got half, half standard rate, and then you have a uh, full standard rate. There's a bank angle that is generally associated with standard rate turns and is dependent on your true airspeed. Uh, effectively, you take your true airspeed, you take 10% uh, of that, and you add about 5 uh, plus 5. So 100 knots, true airspeed, 10% of that is 10 plus 5 is 15. So that gives about 15 degrees of bank. So I'm going to roll in left aileron, left rudder, and go to about 15 degrees of bank. So it's actually kind of a shallow turn, shallow bank, medium bank. And if you look at the trend vector on top of the heading indicator, it actually shows us touching the end of the line, the white line on our turn coordinator. So that's showing us that we're con uh, conducting a standard rate turn. During this time, when I roll in, my primary reference for the bank is actually my attitude indicator because I'm adjusting for a specific bank angle. I will have to increase my back pressure to maintain my 2.5 degree pitch. And as I roll out, right aileron, right rudder, you notice I go back, still maintaining 2.5 degrees of pitch. And roll out. You want to roll out about 5 degrees prior to the heading that you're trying to get to. If I want to roll to the right, right aileron, right rudder. Again, back to 15 degrees of bank. And that's a ballpark figure. And I'll adjust it as needed depending on my trend vector above my heading indicator for my turn, for my, uh, my rate of turn indicator. So it almost looks like 17 degrees is what's giving me uh, my standard rate turn and roll out. Notice that my pitch hasn't changed, still 2.5 degrees. So those, those are your level turns. Those are the turns that you'll use typically in IFR conditions, about, about 15 degrees of bank in, in the system 172 to maintain your standard rate uh, turns. The next thing I want to show you is uh, climbs and descents. Now, in uh, the typical climbs that you will see in IMC or IFR is constant rate climbs either at VY or a cruise climb, uh, or VX if you're trying to uh, gain the shortest amount of altitude and the shortest distance, so the greatest amount of altitude and the shortest distance. Uh, and then typically on the descents, you'll see constant rate descents or constant airspeed descents, or both. You can adjust both. So let's first show you a climb. So I want to do a VY climb. Now on the Cessna, a VY climb is, is going to be full power, and the pitch attitude will be about 12 degrees nose up. So if I want to maintain a straight climb, we're going to slowly increase pitch. And as I do that, smoothly increase full power. But as I increase the power, I'll have to watch out for those left turning tendencies and increase enough right rudder pressure to maintain my heading. And that'll help me keep coordinated. And I'll also check my coordinator here, my turn coordinator, on the top of the triangle with the brick and verify that it's looking like a triangle. So here's 12 degrees, here's full power. And you'll notice that I'm actually getting 71 knots. So I'm close, but it's a little lower. So I'll probably put the, I'll, I'll push the nose down about half a degree and trim it out and see if that gives me 74 knots. During this whole time, I'm still conducting that hub and spoke scan technique. So let's interpret the instruments now. I want a VY climb. So let's look at our airspeed. I'm 72 knots, I'm close. Just got to lower the nose eh, about another half a degree. So I'll put 10 degrees now. Let's take the altitude. I'm climbing. So it's good. It's just a positive trend. 
I'm talking about 500 feet per minute. I'm coordinated. I'm still maintaining my heading on my heading indicator. Back to the attitude indicator, still 10 degrees, and then over to our engine parameters. So my instruments tell me my performance, I'm getting exactly what I wanted, a VY climb on the heading, staying on heading. And that's just straight climbs. If I want to level off, I'll level off 10% of the VSI. So about 50 feet before, I'm going to slowly reduce the pitch back to 2.5 degrees and reduce the power as my airspeed starts increasing slowly back to 2350. That'll give me the 100 knot straight and level flight. So 74 knots equated to about 10 degrees pitch today at full power. If I wanted to do a VY climb, uh, sorry, a cruise climb, typically at Embry-Riddle we'll do cruise climbs at 85 knots in the Cessna. I'll do the same process. I'll smoothly uh, increase the pitch. We'll put about 8.5 degrees this time. And smoothly increase full power. Again, when you increase full power, increase right rudder pressure enough to maintain your heading. And you can verify that you're coordinated with your turn coordinator. And there's my 8.5 degrees pitch. And we'll trim the aircraft out. And you'll notice 8.5 <coughs> is getting me about 84 knots. So I'm close. This is close enough. If I start slowing down too much, I can reduce the pitch about half a degree. But you're making small adjustments. Now what I can also do is do a climbing turn. So again, we'll do standard rate. We'll turn to the left, left aileron, left rudder. And keep the pitch constant. You'll increase back pressure to keep the pitch the same. That'll help you maintain your airspeed. Interpret your instruments, 15 degrees of bank, looking at attitude indicator, looking at our airspeed, still getting what I want, looking at our altimeter, still climbing, looking at our heading indicator, and we're in a left turn, which is what I want. And then we look at our, and our rate of turn indicator, and you'll see that we're still in a constant, uh, a uh, standard rate turn. We're gonna roll out here. Again, still maintaining our pitch for the climb. And we'll level off at 3,000, uh, 4,000 feet. Again, 10% of your VSI. And that'll help us uh, capture our altitude without overshooting or undershooting it. The pitch altitude for straight and level we'll go back to. 2.5 degrees, 250 RPM. As you go higher, you may need more RPM, maybe about 50 to 100 more RPM. Let the aircraft speed up before you reduce the power too fast. Otherwise, you'll end up slowing down too much and, and uh, not actually maintaining your altitude and airspeed that you wanted. It's about 90, 90 to 95 knots is where I'll start reducing the power. 2.5 degrees. At, at 4,000 feet, I probably need about 2,400 RPM. Okay, so those are your climbs. Now, descending... There's two different things you may want to do. You may want to do a, a standard rate descent, sorry, not standard, a constant rate descent, or a constant airspeed descent. Now, typically, we actually may do both, a constant rate and a constant airspeed. We'll adjust the rate with our pitch and adjust the airspeed with power. So if we were told to descend from 4,000 feet to 3,000 feet, let's try a 100 knot descent at 500 feet per minute. What we're going to do there is lower the nose to about a zero pitch. In addition, we will redu reduce the power to about 2,000 RPM. So let's set, let's set the pitch, set the power, and trim it out. And what you'll notice, once my numbers have all stopped on my PFD and my instruments, let's interpret the instruments. Is my airspeed fluctuating? No, it's constant. My altimeter shows my descent, which, which is what I want. Now, I wanted 500 feet per minute. Let's look at our, our VSI. I'm getting about 400 to 450 feet, so I'm pretty close to what I want. If I want to increase that rate of descent, I can reduce the pitch about another half a degree and trim the aircraft out. As you can see right now, I'm getting 500 feet per minute. I'll check my heading indicator to make sure I'm on my heading and staying on heading. I can bug it too. But now that I've decreased the pitch about half a degree, my airspeed's increasing, and I don't want that to happen. So, what you can do there is reduce the power about another 50 RPM. 
So a powerful airspeed pitch for your rate of descent. And as you can see right now, I'm maintaining 500 feet per minute at 100 knots. And I can also do 110 knots at 500 feet per minute. What we can do there is increase the power back up to maybe about 2100 RPM. We'll pitch for 500 feet per minute, about negative one degree down. So you'll see that a higher airspeed descent at 500 feet per minute needs a higher power setting. That's always the common sense. But these are the power settings that we would want you to remember when flying, because if you remember the ballpark figures, then all you have to do is make fine tune adjustments. We'll level off at 3,000 feet to level off, again, 10% of the VSI. Smoothly and simultaneously increase the pitch and increase the power back to cruise power setting, which is 2350 RPM. So you can do a constant airspeed and a constant rate descent at the same time. But the main focus here is to maintain, is use your pitch to, for the rate of descent and power for airspeed and adjust both. You can't use one without the other. Uh, on the approach and then in, in the future flights, we'll show you how to adjust uh, your pitch and power for maintaining a glide path or a specific calculated rate of descent uh, for the approaches. But that's your basic VAI. Uh, it's not too much different from what you've done in VFR flying. You just have to use your attitude indicator now as your primary pitch reference and bank reference.